Hi everyone, it's Graham again and welcome back to my channel. So today I am here with part two of my April book haul. This is going to be all the hardcover books that I've bought in the month of April. The video that you'll see in a couple of days will be all the paperbacks. So without much further ado, let's dive in. The first one that I'm going to show you, I wasn't sure if I'd already hauled this before. I, 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 Something tells me I may have done, but I don't think I have, if that makes sense. But if I have, I apologise. I'm hauling it again because it's beautiful and I love it. So it's um, Captain Tom's Life Lessons um, and it's the Sunday Times number one bestseller. And obviously it's by Captain Sir Tom Moore, um, the amazing gentleman who raised millions of pounds for the NHS last year by doing 100 laps of his uh, garden in time for his 100th birthday. Uh, and who sadly we lost um, earlier on in 2021. Uh, I look so forward to reading this. I also have um, Captain Tom's uh, autobiography, which is over on the shelf over there. I have hauled that before and I have not read it yet. So I will get to that soon. But the back of this says, um, if Captain Tom's big heart and generosity of spirit helped see us through difficult days, Life Lessons was his parting gift. Full of the wit, warmth and wisdom that made him so special, his reflections and guiding principles from a long life, well lived, will be a source of reassurance, hope and encouragement for generations to come, and a reminder, whenever times are hard, that tomorrow will be a good day. I think this is the kind of book that we all should have and we all should absolutely just dive into immediately and I can't wait to, to do that. So the next one is a book that I have many multiple editions of. Um, I was actually recommended this by Lil over at Lil's Vintage World so thank you very much Lil. I am most appreciative. I had no idea that this edition existed until you um, until you let on and told me and I'm so happy to have it in my collection. It is The Complete Alice by Lewis Carroll. And this is the Victoria and Albert Museum's, uh, I think it's an, an exclusive edition, I'm sure it is. Yeah, um, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Very simple, but impactful nonetheless. Um, it flashed across her mind that she had never before seen a rabbit with either a waistcoat pocket or a watch to take out of it. And burning with curiosity, she ran across the field after it. And then we all know what happens next. She falls down the rabbit hole and is introduced to a plethora of incredible characters and a world of adventure. And I just love this so, so much. It's so, so pretty, beautiful. So the next one is another recommendation. Um, I think in one of my previous uh, haul videos, it was possibly the one where I went to Topping and Company to pick up some books that I'd ordered. Uh, and one of them was Pond by Claire Louise Barnett, I think is her name. If I'm wrong, I will put it on the screen. If I'm right, there will be nothing there. So yes, um, but I was recommended, well, I wasn't personally recommended that video, that video, that book. Um, it was a video that I watched by uh, Simon Savage uh, over at Savage Reads and another one of the, the books that his husband chose for him to read in, in the, the time frame of a week was The, the Red House Mystery by A.A. A. Milne and this is the same A.A. A. Milne who wrote Winnie the Pooh. I have not read Winnie the Pooh um, and yeah I need to. I also need to get to this. This is a, a murder mystery and it's um, one of the only other novels I believe that A. A. Milne wrote, or at least one of the, well, the only murder mystery that he wrote. Um, and this just sounds amazing and I absolutely love this edition. This is a second-hand um, library edition but it's in just beautiful condition and I'm going to read the back of this because it sounds amazing. Far from the gentle slopes of the Hundred Acre Wood lies the Red House. The setting for A. A. Milne's only detective story, where secret passages, uninvited guests, a sinister valet and a puzzling murder lay the foundations for a classic crime caper. When the police prove baffled, it is up to a guest at a local inn to appoint himself Sherlock Holmes and together with his friend, the loyal Watson, 
delve deeper into the mysteries of the dead man. The Red House mystery is a lost gem from time from a time before Tigger and a perfectly crafted whodunit with witty dialogue, deft plotting and a most curious cast of characters. I cannot wait to get to this. I do love a good murder mystery, as we all know. Um, and this looks like it is shaping up to be a brilliant one. So now the next one I bought, I already have the paperback edition of this, but I will be meeting the author in September. And I just, I, I didn't want her to hand a paperback edition um, for her to sign. I wanted a first edition of the hardcover. So yeah, I picked it up. It's second hand, it's, a, it's there's, there's a couple of dents and dings, but yeah, I still, I'm still to read this, um, but I will before September. Um, it is I Am, I Am, I Am, 17 Brushes with Death by Maggie O'Farrell. Um, this is Maggie O'Farrell's memoir and it's 17 instances where she had either near-death experiences or was very unwell, I think. Um, I don't know too much about this, but I have seen it all over the place on Booktube and Instagram and indeed a lot of people absolutely adore this. I loved uh, Hamnet last year by Maggie O'Farrell, so yes, I need to read more from her. Death brushed past me on that path, so close that I could feel its touch. I am, I am, I am is Maggie O'Farrell's electric and shocking memoir of the near-death experiences that have punctuated her life. The childhood illness she was not expected to survive, a teenage year yearning to escape that nearly ended in disaster, a terrifying encounter on a remote path, a mismanaged labour in an understaffed hospital. This is a memoir with a difference, 17 encounters with Maggie at different ages in different locations revealed to us a whole life in a series of tense, visceral snapshots. Spare, elegant and utterly candid, it is a book to make you question yourself. What would you do if your life was in danger? How would you react? And what would you stand to lose? I Am, I Am, I Am is a book you will finish newly conscious of your own vulnerability and determined to make every heartbeat count. I must get to this very soon. I want to read this in May. Um, this is, uh, this just sounds amazing. And her writing, from what I remember in Hamnet, is just stunning. And having seen uh, Maggie O'Farrell on Instagram Lives and uh, bookshop uh, streams, where she, she spoke about Hamnet and the writing process and the emotions and stuff, she just seems like such an incredibly intelligent and very uh, fun person and I am dying to read this. I, I just can't wait. So the next one is a book that a lot of people have been talking about and um, Simon Savage put up on his Instagram, let's get this book uh, to the bestsellers list and buy it immediately. So I did. It is De Transition Baby by Tori Peters. Um, and this has been long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction for 2021. And it's just gorgeous. Look at it. It's just amazing. And it sounds outstanding as well. A uniquely trans take on love, motherhood, and those exes who just, who you just can't quit. Reese nearly had it all, a loving relationship with Amy, an apartment in New York, a job she didn't hate. She'd scraped together a life previous generations of trans women could only dream of. The only thing missing was a child. Then everything fell apart. And three years on, Reese is still in self-destruct mode, avoiding her loneliness by sleeping with married men. When her ex calls to, asks, to, a to ask if she wants to be a mother, Reese finds herself intrigued. After being attacked in the street, Amy detransitioned to become Ains, changed jobs, and think and and thinking he was infertile, started an affair with his boss Katrina. Now Katrina's pregnant. Could the three of them form an unconventional family and raise the baby together? That just sounds amazing, and I'm so there for it. 
and I will hopefully get to this soon. Um, and if you haven't bought this, please do so immediately. The next one is a book that, again, I have seen everywhere on uh, Bookstagram and Booktube. And when I was shopping in Tesco's for <laughs> booze and <laughs> essentials, um, I saw this and couldn't not have it. Um, the Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. Uh, you won't want to leave until you can't. Uh, this just sounds amazing. Uh, the the whole sort of setting of this book really intrigues me because I work in a hotel, and from what I read in this, it's kind of it's set in a hotel but with a difference. Everyone's in danger. Anyone could be next. An imposing isolated hotel high up in the Swiss Alps is the last place Ellen Warner wants to be, but she's taken time off from her job as a detective. So when she receives an invitation out of the blue to celebrate her estranged brother's recent engagement, she has no choice but to accept. Arriving in the midst of a threatening storm, Ellen immediately feels on edge. Though it's beautiful, something about the, the hotel, recently converted from an abandoned sanatorium, makes her nervous, as does her brother, Isaac. And when they take the following and when they wake the following morning to discover his fiancée, Laura, has vanished without a trace, Ellen's unease grows. With the storm cutting off access to, the, to and from the hotel, the longer Laura stays missing, the more the remaining guests start to panic. But no one has realised yet that another, another woman has gone missing, and she's the only one who could have warned them just how much danger they're all in. It just sounds amazing and I work in a hotel and sometimes I do night shift and that, that whole kind of thing scares me you know like the shining and scary happenings and yeah so I do look forward to getting to this but I'll probably go in with great trepidation <laughs> but this sounds glorious. The next one was also another that I found in Tesco's on the same shopping trip in fact the last lot are from the same shopping trip, so yeah. Um, <laughs> this is Girl A uh, by Abigail Dean, and it's been blurbed by authors such as Paula Hawkins and Jesse Burton. Paula Hawkins says, I loved it. Uh, Jesse Burton says, an astonishing achievement. I believe that this is a debut from the author, and it's for from what I can uh, find on Goodreads and stuff, it's had some really decent reviews. Um, but let's have a little read of what it's about. Girl A, she said, the girl who escaped. If anyone was going to make it, it was going to be you. Lex Gracie doesn't want to think about her family. She doesn't want to think about growing up in her parents' house of horrors. And she doesn't want to think about her identity as Girl A the girl who escaped. When her mother dies in prison and leaves Lex and her siblings the family home, she can't run from her past any longer. Today, sorry, not today, together, together, one of these days I'll get through an entire video and I will read a blurb and not make a mistake. <sighs> together with her sister, Evie, <laughs> together with her sister, Evie, Lex intends to turn the house of horrors into a force for good. But first, she must come to terms with her six siblings and with the childhood they shared. Beautifully written and incredibly powerful, Girl A is a story of redemption, of horror and of love. And yes, I look so forward to reading this because it sounds very intriguing and very much my cup of tea. So the second last one is a memoir autobiography and it's by someone who I have always had a deep respect for. Um, just from where they came from to the heights of fame that they rose to and the, the girl band that they were in, they were just, it was just amazing and I really love her. She, she was amazing in uh, St Trinian's, I think it was uh, Frit Fritten's Gold, St Trinian's 2, she had a, a role in that film. It is 
Hear Me Out by Sarah Harding. My story, my words, my life. I believe that Sarah has uh, an aggressive form of breast cancer and um, is, is very, very ill at the moment. Um, so when I saw this, I had, I had read that story um, or seen it on the news or something, I can't remember, but I was definitely aware of, of how ill Sarah was. And I thought I'd, I'd, I'd love to read her story from her point of view. So I picked this up and I've, I've, not, I've not gotten to it yet, but I will. Um, so let's have a little read. <clears throat> Sarah Harding is best known as the wild member of Girls Aloud, whose reputation for partying, drinking and dating made her a tabloid favourite. But where does the celebrity Sarah Harding end and the real Sarah begin? Because sometimes what you see isn't always what you get. Faced with a devastating cancer diagnosis that turned her life upside down, Sarah has decided that now is the time to write her story, her truth. Celebrating her successes and reflecting on the past, Sarah walks us through her early childhood to her difficult rise to fame. She talks about the years she spent working as a waitress, debt collector, telephone operator, and club promoter to finally getting the big break that would catapult her into the limelight. After years of touring caravan parks and pubs, just for the chance to perform, Sarah would become part of one of the UK's most popular girl bands, Girls Aloud, and experience some of the biggest highs and some of the lowest moments of her life. Now, for the first time, she opens up about her time spent in the band, as well as her temp tempestuous love life and the breakup that made her hit rock bottom, as well as her struggles with fame. And in doing so, she finally puts to bed some of the terrible tabloid rumours that have followed her around for years. This is Sarah Harding in her own words. And I really cannot wait to get to this because she was easily my favourite member of Girls Aloud, just because she was so wild and so out there. And yeah, so I look forward to getting to this. And yeah. I think everyone should probably give this a go because it just sounds amazing. And who doesn't love a good memoir? Who doesn't love being nosy and sticking their oar into people's business? <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> so the last one is the final one that I got from Tesco's and it's the last book in this haul. And I'm so excited for this. As a lover of true crime and all that kind of dark side of, 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 of life, I... I'm so excited about this book. It is Surviving the Craze by David Teal. I saw them get away with murder. Now I know why. The final explosive secret about the firm. The Craze are uh, a, a couple of people that really interest me. How they got away with what they got away with for so long um, and then their downfall. And the fact that when they were convicted of the crimes that they um, that they committed, they had literally just missed the death penalty and then spent pretty much the rest of their lives incarcerated. Rightly so, um, but they're just so it's that it's that glamorous, um, swaying sixties, uh, just you know, it's it's intriguing, it's interesting. It's morbid as well, but yeah. <laughs> so let's have a little a little read. David Teal, groomed by the twins, controlled by threats, falsely imprisoned by the state for his own protection, as younger brother of Cray and former Bobby. Turns out that's only half the story. David first met the Crays when he was 17 years old. He was drawn into London's underworld and became Ronnie's reluctant foot soldier, driver, errand boy. He was close to murder and witnessed menaces and the increasingly psychotic behaviour of the most feared men in gangster land. Unbeknown to David, his brother Bobby had bravely turned informer at great risk to his own safety and that of his brothers. That had its own consequences. But why, when the police are being furnished with eyewitness statements from an impeccable source, were they seemingly in incapable of bringing the twins to justice. The craze were untouchable. After tireless research through newly released documents in the National Archives and piecing previously classified information together, 
with his own first-hand knowledge of the time, David Teal uncovers the shocking new truth revealed in this book for the first time. David's story rewrites history. I need to read this immediately. I, again, as a, a fan of true crime and all that good stuff, <laughs> this is so my cup of tea and I can't wait to get to it. Um, but yeah, that is the last book in my hardcover part two April book haul. Um, I hope you have seen something that you would like to, to read. What are you reading at the moment? Let me know downstairs in the comments. Um, but for the time being, I shall, I shall toddle off and let you get on with your day. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Whatever you're doing, I hope you have so much fun doing it. Whatever you're reading, I hope you love it. Stay fabulous, be amazing, be yourself, stay safe. And I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye-bye.